We're going to walk through a simple LSMW example using a screen recording to update SiteMaster basic data. This is an overview of the process steps for this example LSMW project. You work through the process steps in order to define the target object, the source structures, and field mapping. You can't skip any of the highlighted define and map steps. Notice that the sequence of the steps demands that you begin with the end in mind. It's all about the transaction code. In this case, it's all about WB02. So we'll begin there and work our way back towards the source data file. When that's done, when you have a completely defined LSMW project, then it's possible to repeatedly perform the read and execute steps using a source data file for your update requirements. If there's an error, for example, let's say a data source error, then after clearing the error, always return to the read step and begin executing in sequence from that point. You can't resume at the convert data step. WB02 isn't batch enabled, and because of this, SiteMaster isn't a recommended candidate for screen recording. But as you'll soon see, screen recording does work for some basic examples, such as this example, because we won't attempt to access any secondary screens. Before we begin, let's have a look at the current state of the master data. So we'll go to WB02, and we'll look at SiteMaster CU01. You can see that the calendar field is empty on Site CU01. We're going to use an LSMW to update the calendar for this site and for a few other sites. Notice that the field for calendar, we'll just press the F1 key and then check the technical settings, and you can see that the field name for the calendar is FABKL. Also, take note that on the initial screen of WB02, same thing, technical information, and the field name is LOCNR. So let's start transaction code LSMW. Notice these NAG screens that are going to pop up at many steps along the way. The best thing to do is to check this box and then you won't be bothered by it again. So we're going to create a new LSMW project. Let's call it MD test. The subproject we will call site. And we'll call the object calendar. Notice that you have to put your cursor back in the project field if the project doesn't exist. If you would press the create button while your cursor is in the object field, you'd get an error message saying that the project doesn't exist. Yet, if you put your cursor in the project field, when the project, the subproject, and the object don't exist, then it works correctly and it lets you create the project. So we'll call the project test, then it's going to prompt us for a description for the subproject. So now we can click the execute button. And we're now with the LSMW process step list. We're going to work our way through these one at a time. You do them in sequence, starting at the top and work towards the bottom. We'll begin by defining the object. Every time you go into one of these process steps, the first thing you do is go into the change mode because it starts in display. So we'll go into the change mode. We have to decide what object type we're going to use and what we're going to use is a batch input recording. Then click the button that says Recordings Overview. We're going to create a new recording, and we'll just call it Site001. And give it a quick description. Now it wants to know what T code that we're going to use, which will be WB02. We'll click Continue. And now we launch right into the transaction, which is being recorded. Put your cursor into the field, type in the value that you want, and then click on the Continue button. I'm then going to click into the calendar field. I'm going to type US as a value, and then I'm going to click Save, which is going to end the transaction. First thing that we're going to do is, is look at 
the fields where we actually added values, such as the location number, and we're going to click the default, and we're going to come down here to FABKL and also click default. And what that's done is it's created uh, fields that we can map to. We then have other fields here, like purchase org and the organization structure information, which we don't want to be part of our mapping. Uh, we don't want to touch or change these fields. So we'll left click them to select them. And then we'll click this delete uh, screen field button and we'll take them out one at a time. So I'm going to take out all of those fields that we're not using. The only thing that's left here is the location number and the factory calendar key which is all that we wanted. Once we've adjusted this so that we're only mapping the fields that we're interested in, we'll click the Save button and then go back. Then come here to the recording, select it so that the, the recording that we just made is here. Click Save. Now we go back. Now we're going to define the source structures click execute go to the change mode we're going to create one source structure we'll call it basic data click save we're creating a source structure that's going to align with our input files. And we're only using basic data, so there'll only be one input source structure. There's only going to be one input file. Now we're going to define the fields that are in our structure. Choose the radio button for define source fields. Click execute. Like all the other steps, we'll begin by entering the change mode. Left click the basic data structure and click the create field button. The first field will be LOCNR, and the field length is going to be four characters. Left click the location field and then click create field. And we'll enter in the data for the next field, which will be calendar, and it will only be two characters long. The reason we left clicked the location number was so that the, when we created the next field, the calendar would be inserted after the location number. So you want to keep always selecting the last field before you create a new field, and that way your fields will be created in the correct order. So it's going to be site number and then calendar. We'll click save and then back. Now we're going to define the structure relations. On this radio button, we'll click Execute. We'll go into the change mode. And you'll see that our structure, Site001, is already related to basic data. We still had to perform this step and enter into the change mode and click Save, then go back. If we didn't perform the step, then the program wouldn't allow us to continue on to the next step. We'll now define the field mapping and conversion rules. Go into the change mode. Because we were careful to create source field names that matched the target field names, we can use automatic mapping to map the source to the target fields. So we just choose more, extras, auto field mapping. And we're going to accept all of the default options, except we're going to choose no confirmation. We don't want the system to ask us to confirm every field. We'll press continue and the auto field mapping is complete. We start with T code WB02 in the screen recording. We see that the location number is moved to the location number and the calendar field on the source is moved to basic data calendar on the target. That was all mapped automatically for you. This is actually a line of op op code that is moving that data. You could double click any one of these in the code section and edit the ABAP code yourself if you wanted to do something special with the transfer of the data, but there's no it's not necessary for us to do that.
we'll click Save, go back, and that completes the definition of the recording and the mapping. So now we're going to specify the files that will be used. Execute. Enter a change mode. And you'll see that the system just proposed two file names. We have an import data file that's going to be used on the, on the SAP application server. And we have a converted data file. We'll left click the legacy data on the PC front end to select it and then click Add Entry. Let's enter the fully qualified path. So we're going to be in the W drive in a folder called data and the file name will be sitemaster 001.txt. We'll give it a name, site data 01. We're going to choose the delimiter of tabulator, which means that the data will be tab delimited. We'll check both of the options that for uh, the field names at the start of the file, the field order matching the source structure definition, and then choose continue and save. Then back again. Now we'll assign the files. Notice that the basic data structure and the file are already related to each other. We'll still enter the change mode and still click save because the step has to be executed even though the default was already supplied. Now we'll go back. Now we're ready to read the data, but the data has not yet been created. We'll manually create the data now. I like to use Excel for doing that, so we'll create a new Excel workbook. The first step is going to be to format all of the cells in the worksheet as text. It's a good habit because many of the times when we're creating data, we're going to have leading zeros in our source data. And if you're in the habit of always creating your source data formatted as text, Excel won't cause you to lose the leading zeros. We'll put our column names, our field names, in the first row. And then we'll just enter the rows of data. So first the site numbers, CU01, CU02. The values that we're going to add for the calendar will be US and Y4 again. Save it as a text delimited file. Just say save as type, text, tab delimited, save. And then we can just simply close Excel. If we look at the text file that we've created with Notepad++, and choose to show all of the symbols, show all characters, you can see that the data that we've created is correct. There's a tab between each of the field elements, and there's also a carriage return line feed at the end of each data line. It's a handy way to look at the data to see if it's properly formatted. So let's close this. Before reading and executing the LSMW project, let's go back and check some of our SAP GUI settings. So if we go all the way back to the beginning, and choose SAP GUI settings and actions options. You go to the security and configuration tab, you'll see that we have a strict to deny for the security. And I'm gonna set that to disabled so that we won't be bothered by any security nag screens. You also want to check the scripting settings. Make sure that you have enabled scripting and uncheck all of these settings to notify you about when scripts are being executed. This will prevent a bunch of other nag screens from appearing. I'll click apply and OK. Let's, re let's return to LSMW and resume execution of our LSMW project. Now we can go to read data. We'll execute. Here, if we wanted to use only a limited number of the records that are our source data file, say we only wanted to use two out of the four records, we could say use one to two 
of the transactions. We're going to use all four, so I'm just going to leave that blank and click Execute again. Notice that we have written four records. So there's four transactions, so that's good. So then we'll go back, back again. If you'd like to, you can display the red data. It's not mandatory, but you do so. Let's have a look at it. We'll execute. Again, we could choose to look at only part of the data, but we'll look at all of the records that were read in, and we'll click Continue. You can see the data that was read in from the source data. You can click one of the records, and you can see what values were actually mapped in by field name. When the read data step was performed, the data was transferred from our PC to the application server. Now we're going to perform the convert data step, and the data will be read from that file on the application server and converted through the LSMW program into the target structures. So let's choose Convert Data, and we'll execute. Again, we could choose to only use part of the data that's been transferred to the application server, but we'll just leave this selection blank and we'll click Execute again. Notice that in the conversion step we didn't get any errors and that four records were again written, which is our confirmation that the conversion went okay. If we'd have had any ABOP code that we created in our LSMW project, say to manipulate the uh, mapping of the source to the target data, that ABOP code would have been executed when we performed the convert data step. We can now display the convert data. That's an optional step. We won't filter any of this and we'll see all of the data that was converted. And now what you see, now that the data has been converted, is that it is in the format of the target, not in the format of the source. So if we choose one of these records, you can see we're going to fill up the plant and we're going to fill up the factory calendar. So now we're in the format of the target. Now we're going to create a batch input session. So we'll execute here. And we'll just click Execute again. One batch has been created. Now we'll run the batch input section. This is where we actually execute the LSMW project. We'll choose the batch file that's here, and we'll say process. We're going to process in the background, and we'll choose extended log, and now we'll choose process. You can see here a confirmation that a session has been passed to the background processing. This is going to run pretty quick because there's only four transactions. T code WB02 will actually execute in the background four times. I'll click the refresh button to confirm that the process has ended. And then we'll just click on the log button and we can see that the session has been completed. We can double click that and we can see that the four transactions were read and processed successfully and that in fact there were no errors. Now we'll just go back and let's look at WB03 for site CU01 and you can see that the calendar has been set now to US. And if we do the same thing for CU02 we can see that the calendar has been set to Y4. And so the LSMW project was successfully executed and our master data was updated as expected.